Welcome to Tintum Network. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cyrus. In today's episode, I have to take some time out and do a little research into a topic that I term the African powerhouse that can be. And during this research, I came to a conclusion that no one single African country in the years ahead is going to survive unless we came together as a team. And this particular team here is the reason for this podcast. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by EM Gold Wines in Tesano. They are the importers and distributors of 12 different brands of wine from Spain and Italy. They sell at wholesale prices, and I'm sure when you call them, they'll make you a very good offer. If you find our content interesting, please do well to like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment if you have to. We want to go further from here. And, and invite resource people to do interviews and all that. And now, let me give you a little perspective into the whole topic. You see, the biggest miracle to me in all of the world in the 21st century is the scenario with the United States of America. I'll explain why. You see, in the 21st century, what happened almost common with most countries or big countries in the world is there was a lot of division. Countries were falling apart. It was at this same time that America came together as one unit and remained together where their power is. And to me, that is what makes them special. So that should tell you how difficult coming together is. Remember, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah started this before the EU even thought about it. And it couldn't work in Africa. And after so many years, the EU came together, opened their borders, and now they have one unit. And it's working for them. It is difficult but it is the only way through which Africa is going to survive in the world politics. And I'm going to give you a lot of facts to consider. So clearly, AU, which is the African Union, isn't working to the capacity that every African country or president expected. So what do we do? What I'm proposing here is when few African countries who have similar interests, who may share borders, come together instead of waiting for the whole of EU to decide on whatever to do before things are done. So I did this research with five countries in mind, starting with Nigeria, Ghana, the Ivory Coast, Togo, and Benin. Now, you may want to say, but why these, uh, these five countries? I'm going to give you the reasons. And, and though, for those of you who are thinking that the language will be a barrier, you, are, you got it totally wrong. Because remember... Already in Nigeria, they have more than 200 local languages, and they've survived as a country, remember? It is a country already with two, more than 200 languages, and Ghana has more than 50 languages, and we're already one country. So bringing in countries with French and English wouldn't be that of a major problem. So let's get that out of the way. In moving forward, I am not naive that we, we, we are going to experience a lot of challenges. And in fact, there is a challenge already ongoing in Nigeria with the election situation. We need Nigeria more united than divided. So we pray for them that they will come out strong and united. And then we are able to move on from there and get one common currency and then open the borders and then get things flowing with goods and services and all that. Listen, this is doable if you look at it critically. And we don't need any other person to come advise us to get this done if we want to get this thing done. And for those of you who may think that Nigeria may be a threat to this union because of their size, you are totally ignorant. And I think you should be following me more and coming back to hear most of my podcasts to see my take on why. Instantly, when this happens, okay, when this union comes together, immediately we have a population of more than 300 million people. And we are getting close to the size of the United States of America in population. What also happens instantly is we get a land size of more than 1.6 million kilometers squared, bigger than the size of Iran. Think about it. There's a lot of good things that comes with this unity that I'm proposing. And this is just for five countries. Listen, I didn't pick these five African countries because of their name or whatever interest I have there. No, I picked these five West African countries because of what they bring to the table. And that should be the most important thing. They are merits. And I'm going to break them down for you here, beginning with Nigeria. Nigeria is the 14th largest producer of oil in the world. Think about that. 
they are the second largest producer of oil in Africa, only behind Angola, which happened recently. Listen, Nigeria has 200 million people living there. If you are a businessman, you would understand what I mean by 200 million people. It is good for business. And so they have all that oil and then all that population. They have more oil, as a matter of fact, than Qatar, the country that recently hosted the, uh, the soccer games, the, the football World Cup, and then pumped in more than $200 billion of money. Nigeria has more oil than Qatar. And so when we have the oil and the population come together, that is something huge to consider. And then we go to number two, which is Ghana. My beloved country, Ghana, is second at the table. This is what we bring to the table. We are the sixth producer of gold in all of the world. We are the number one producer of gold in Africa. We have 30 million plus people. Listen, guys, there's a lot of light ahead in Africa. Africa may be struggling now, but the future is right here. If we can figure this thing out and learn how to work together as a team in Africa, there's a lot of great things that are going to happen. A lot of all these Western countries and North American countries will be looking at Africa for a lot of supplies. I tell you this for a fact. So let's learn how to get this thing done. And this thing can be done even in our own lifetime as we live. We don't have to die and hope these things are done. It can be done right now. Trust me. The Ivory Coast come to the table as the world's largest producer of cocoa with Ghana at second place and Nigeria, I think, somewhere at fifth. We are not a small population anymore. We are growing as people. We are more than a billion people. All we need to do is figure out how to work together. Trust me. Togo is one of the world's leading producers of phosphate, the same chemical used in producing fertilizers. All the fertilizers that we need in Africa, we can't be getting it from Togo. And they have more than 60 million tons of phosphate reserve in Togo right now. And then Benin. Benin is Africa's largest producer of cotton. So I didn't just think of these countries because of their, their, their nearness or proximity to us, but they bring to the table giant resources that we need in, in, in coming together as a group that will be very significant in the coming years. One other reason why Togo and Benin with small population yet significant in this union is because of movement of people, goods and services across borders. How do you do that coming from Cote d'Ivoire through Ghana to Nigeria freely? You have to get these people aligned. And when we are all connected, there'll be free flow of people, goods and services. Don't get it twisted. They are very important. Moving on, let me delve a little deeper into five selected commodities these five countries bring to the table. And these five commodities are a game changer in the global economy, starting off with Nigeria. Oil and gas is valued at $4.3 trillion, and Nigeria only makes $40 billion in a year. The gold jewelry industry is valued at $3.75 trillion. Ghana produces about 137 tons of gold every year, yet we only make about $13 billion in a year. It's like an elephant who eats the size of an ant. And it, it even gets worse. And again, the chocolate industry is valued at $116 billion. Ivory Coast makes just about $3.5 billion in a year. Ghana makes $1.4 billion in a year. Together, these two giants in producing cocoa which is the raw materials, the main raw material for making chocolate all around the world, makes less than 6% of that total value. Think about that. Same situation is happening to Togo and Benin, guys. Africa is not winning. We are losing. And something must change. An important question I had to ask myself was this. If AU is struggling to get this thing done, if ECOWAS is struggling to figure this thing out, what stops few African countries, two, three, four, from getting it done? What stops them from uniting? It's like this. You live in a family with nine other siblings, and clearly you see your parents are struggling to feed everybody. What stops two, three, four, five of you to, from coming together as a team to work and help everybody out? 
This is what I'm proposing. We don't need to wait for the whole of Africa to be united. We can start in our small corners, our own small corners. Two, three countries coming together with similar interests. And then from there, when it's attractive, other countries will love to join. And that is how we expand. For God's sake, the moment we come together, we'll have more arable lands than the whole of Europe put together. Did you know that with our over 300 million people, we can produce whatever we want and sell to ourselves? We don't need to be in a hurry to be looking for foreign markets. Three, more than 300 million people is good enough. And remember, Europe is 27 countries that has come together to get the over, what, 447 million people. With just five African countries, we get more than 300 million people. And that is just the beginning. There are greater things we can achieve when we unite. I have lived in China for a while, and this is very common even in India. And there's a lot of millionaires in China and India. The reason is simple. When they produce stuff, the first market they look for is in the, the foreign market. They have the numbers from within to buy, and that is very, very important to them. When we come together with our youthful population, when we come together, it will be a blast. It will be a wonder. We don't need to wait and get big. We can start with two, three countries in Africa. It is possible in our lifetime. Trust me. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the continent, Africa, is sick. If you look around the continent, there's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of joblessness. It is so pathetic. We are the least respected people in all of the world. And I have so many horrific stories to share with you. It's about time that we implement different solutions to our problems. Because clearly, all the solutions we have been applying in the past hasn't worked. So what are you doing about it? This is my proposal, Mr. President. Wherever you live, whoever you are watching me from here, it's about time there is a change in how we do things. Things cannot go on like this. We need a new kind of leadership, not rulership. We need a new kind of change that can work in their own time frame to bring the kind of change Africa wants. Listen, all the resources cannot be concentrated on you forever. You will die one day and leave it behind. You need to leave a legacy. You need to let people remember you for the great things you did for your nation. Look at the millions of youth who don't get to graduate from universities. Walking around in the daytime, wasting their youth age in Africa every year. And look at the thousands of graduates that come out from our universities. And most of these leaving Africa to Europe and North America to see greener pastures. Something must change as a leader of a country. Until when will all the resources be directed at your needs? You need to leave a legacy. You need to find solutions in Africa. We need to come together to find common solutions to common problems in Africa. And that is what will sustain us in the years ahead. Until we come your way again. It's bye-bye for now.